All right, day number 15, and I am feeling amazing. Big smile on my face, feeling marvelous, and that's because I'm halfway through my trip. I think technically I'm here for 31 days, but whatever, I'm not thinking about that. 30 days in Vegas, today hit. Today marks the halfway point, and I'm feeling much better than I ever thought I would feel halfway through this trip, and I'm feeling much better than I've ever felt halfway through my two previous uh, Vegas marathon trips. Um, I gotta say, this potentially, this trip could be my favorite Vegas trip of all time, which is interesting and ironic because I haven't really stayed at any of my favorite hotels. You know how I do it. I like my Venetian Palazzo, Wynn, Encore, Aria, you know, Cosmo, Caesar Palace. Uh, but on this trip, I really wanted to make an effort to round up my Vegas hotel portfolio. And that means going to hotels that I've walked past hundreds of times and I never decided to stay at. And also like getting outside my normal patterns of travel and getting to more of these four star and four and a half star hotels. And during this trip, I have, you know, kind of discovered some gems, whether that be restaurants or certain things about hotels or just really unearthed experiences that I never thought I would have before. And that is really making this trip special. It's just doing something different. And that is really kind of the epitome and crux of this channel is doing different things, finding out what they are, and then relaying to you if they are good or bad. And um, I've really kind of done that on this Vegas trip. And although it hasn't been the most luxurious one, at least in terms of the hotels, I mean, there have been some very, very luxurious moments on this trip already. But in terms of my two previous trips, they haven't been as luxurious as those. But in terms of memories and in terms of experiences and just in terms of overall fun, this trip potentially could be my favorite Vegas trip of all time. You know, I was thinking about this last night in bed. Um, you know, people always ask and they're curious about what the life of a solo traveler is like. Like, what what is what's the allure of it? Why do people do it? Why why do they continue to do it? I think a lot of it is because you get to do this lifestyle. You're not pinned or tethered to anyone else, and you're not tethered to their lifestyle, their career, their whatever. You can just kind of go and do whatever you want. But I think more than anything what a lot of people don't talk about is what you get from it personally. And I'm not talking about the memories or experiences. I'm talking about what it does for you. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. The six superpowers that you get for being a solo traveler or the you know, six superhuman characteristics. You know what I'm talking about. Obviously, you're not going to be able to stop time or uh, you know, hit someone with a fireball or anything like that. But the six superhuman characteristics, I'm calling them superpowers that you get from being a solo traveler. Number one, um, hyper, hyper self-awareness. Um, you know, awareness is ironic because it's relative. You may think that you're very self-aware, but you might find out years down the road that you weren't. You know, there are levels to it, like anything in life. But if you really want to work on your self-awareness, if people have told you that you're not very aware, maybe it's just something that you want to have or improve on, um, become a solo traveler because you're going to be stuck by yourself all the time. And you're going to be forced to deal with your own thoughts and your fears and the things that make you happy, your goals, your mannerisms, your attitude, um, the way that you react to certain scenarios, you're, those are gonna be on the forefront because there's gonna be nothing else to distract you from them. You're not gonna be able to be in the comfort of someone else and you're not gonna be in your own company confines where you may have been previously where those tics and mannerisms and whatever maybe were a bit more subliminal. When you're on your own and you're traveling and you're in new places, um, you're going to just be forced to take a look at yourself and how you react to certain situations. And you're going to get a real deep, vivid, honest, realistic, and somewhat critical assessment of your life. So if you want to work on your self-awareness, definitely become a solo traveler. Uh, number two, this kind of builds on that. You're going to become really resourceful because you're not going to be able to rely on anyone else to do something. Maybe in the past, you had a boyfriend or girlfriend that made the restaurant reservations, or you had a boyfriend or girlfriend that spoke the language or did the translating for you. Or maybe you had someone that flagged down the taxis, or maybe you had someone that carried your luggage, or maybe you had someone that actually planned the trip for you. That's not happening when you're a solo traveler. All those things I just mentioned, and then a litany more of those things, are now reliant upon you. So it's gonna be on you to make your own flight. It's gonna be on you to arrange transportation. It's gonna be on you to communicate in a foreign language. It's gonna be on you to get directions. It's gonna be on you to be safe, to be resilient, and also to have the best time ever. You are now in charge of your own personal happiness and success. So resourcefulness, number two, that is the second superpower that you're gonna get by being a solo traveler. Uh, awareness and resourcefulness, they kind of parlay into number three, it's confidence. 
because now you are more aware of yourself and becoming more aware of yourself makes you also aware of other people. You know your own mannerisms, now you're watching other people's mannerisms, you're able to read them. So you're more aware and also now you're more resourceful. That's gonna make you more confident. It's gonna make you more confident in every area of your life. Maybe you decide to go eat at a bar alone. Maybe you decide to go out alone at night by yourself. Maybe you decide to go to a certain area of a country that you never have before. Um, whatever it is, it's gonna make you more confident. And then when you decide to get back into your normal life, uh, you can parlay that into a job, a relationship, whatever else. Um, it's gonna give you supreme confidence because you are able to navigate the world on your own and navigating the world on your own is very difficult. All of a sudden you get back to your life and maybe navigating a relationship, um, a family, or a job, that's gonna be really, really easy. So number three, confidence. Now that you're more confident, you have the ability to be more outgoing. I say the ability because there are a lot of people who enjoy kind of being more um, introspective and introverted when they are traveling. But if you want to exert yourself in a social situation, because you have the confidence, of course, the resourcefulness, that's gonna lead into you being more outgoing if you want to be. So maybe you decide to strike up more conversations than you normally would. Maybe you decide to approach people that you haven't in the past. Uh, maybe you decide to network a little bit more, or maybe you decide to actually make international friends, something you've never really done before. So whatever that situation or scenario might be, you're gonna have that confidence in your tool belt, which you can really deploy at any time. Number five and six are kind of the most obvious, but I put them at the end because these are the ones you reach at the end. Uh, number five is independence, and I'm talking true independence. Uh, I'm not talking financial independence, and I'm not talking about like political independence. I'm talking about the ability to create your own happiness, the ability to create your own experiences, the ability to create your own memories, and really the ability to do what you want while traveling. I know when I was younger, I was reliant upon others to travel with me because I did not have the confidence to travel alone. And now that I do, I am not reliant upon the schedules of others. I'm not relied upon their finances or their personal responsibilities. Uh, if I wanna go somewhere for a week or two, I can do that. And it really kind of creates um, a personal independence as well. All of a sudden, you aren't so reliant on other people for happiness. All of a sudden, you aren't so reliant upon other people for social interactions. Maybe you had a high social need before and you realize that's just because you didn't have the confidence to do things alone. Or maybe now that you are more independent, you're not going out as much and you're finding passions and interests and other things, whatever it could be. Uh, when you get back into your normal life or maybe you just continue to do this in your travel lifestyle, you're gonna realize that you're gonna be much more independent and you can please yourself more. Um, you don't have to sacrifice maybe your values um, or your principles or your time or responsibilities for others. You can just have the ability to make your own self happy. So, all right, so number five, the fifth superpower uh, is independence. And then lastly, this this is it. This is the big one. This is the one that at least I'm always looking for and that's evolution, personal evolution and growth. Um, all those things that I just mentioned, awareness, resourcefulness, confidence, being outgoing and independent, all that leads to growth. And that is really the apex of the pyramid. Um, it's just challenging yourself. And whether that's learning a new language or approaching new people um, or learning how to protect yourself in foreign environments or learning how to make yourself happy or even maybe just learning more about yourself in general, what you don't like, uh, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, whatever. Um, it's all about growth. And I think the more that you grow, obviously the better person you become. All the things I talked about are gonna help you get there. Awareness, resourcefulness, confidence, you know, being outgoing, approaching people, being independent. Um, I think growth is just the most beautiful thing that you get in life and I think solo traveling is going to exacerbate that. It's all about being a better person, finding the best version of yourself. And whether that's learning a new language or learning how to protect yourself in other environments or just learning what makes you happy or sad or learning about what type of people or things or moments you wanna surround yourself with, whatever it could be, and it could really be anything. It's really about growth. And then once you reach that growth and you get to other levels, that's when you can really help others as well. It's hard to help someone that you're on the same level at, right? Because you both kind of have the same paradigms and same perspectives. But if you elevate yourself, it's much easier to help others kind of get to that level and bring them up. So it's all about personal development and growth. And when you are forced outside your comfort zone in foreign environments, foreign countries, new environments, new scenarios, you are forced to unearth and cultivate and really deploy new skills. And then you can bring those new skills back into your life. So that's really it. That's the way I see it. I think those are six big superpowers or superhuman characteristics that you get by being a solo traveler. 
awareness, resourcefulness, confidence, being outgoing, being independent, and then growth. So for you fellow solo travelers out there, let me know if you agree. Uh, let me know if there's any big one that I'm missing. These are things that I have definitely uh, utilized while becoming a solo traveler, and they're things that I continue to work on. Um, all of them are dynamic. You just don't reach one level of awareness or resourcefulness. You continue to work on them. Uh, there are certainly different levels to each one of these, and um, that's the beauty of traveling is that you can always take your acumen uh, to the next level. All right, so that is it for my entry today, 15 days in Vegas, feeling fantastic. Want to do something a little different and talk about some of the great things you get by being a solo traveler. I'm going to head down to the pool. I can hear the music up here. It's, it sounds like a really fun environment. It looks like a really fun environment. And then Tender Steakhouse tonight. And uh, I'll check in tomorrow and let you know how it goes.